order the August 17th meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board being recorded by ACMI. First on our agenda this evening is an environmental design review special permit for 59 Lowell Street. Uh, the applicants requesting a large house addition uh, parcel abutting the Minuteman bikeway. I would ask the applicant to step forward and have a seat. Uh, tell us your name and address for the record, please. Sure, Kathleen Moriarty, 59 Lowell Street. Thank you for coming. Thank you. The floor is yours. The floor is mine, okay. Uh, I've not done this before, so just uh, redirect me as, as needed. So the addition is mainly to add another bedroom, I'm expecting, so I need another bedroom. Um, and, you know, I need the floor space below it, and I guess the basement sets it above the uh, 750 square foot mark, unless I, I just went to other measures that I don't think apply with this particular, um, that were considered with just the building permit. What's the seven? Oh, that's the, what's the 750 foot mark? That's for the ZBA, I guess, primarily, oh. and we went down the wrong path, so I've kind of been going in circles for a while. <laughs> yeah, um, if I can interject just please. to, um, the 750 square feet is if you're increasing the large house addition bylaw is if you're increasing your gross square um, footage uh, floor space by 750 square feet or 50% or more of the original structure's uh -huh. gross floor area. You need a special permit for a large house addition. And because this property abuts the bike path, it was directed to redevelopment board, similarly to the one on Summer Street that we had in 2012. So the total square footage now is 1,298? That includes basement space, yeah. And the new is 2,460? Yeah, that's basement space again. Both um, of it includes it basement? like 2,000, yeah. So it is less than twice, just a little bit, right? Yeah. So it's triggered by the over 750 square feet. So just to that and the bike path. Right. So I think we, we went through this, um, but it just being on the bike path apparently is something that could just set it over on its own and have me visit with each of you. Mm -hmm. um, now, I, there's the 12 questions. Where would you like me to start? Like, what would be most useful? Would it be from the plans? Would it be from impact in the neighborhood? Um, you know, the pictures to show that I won't be obstructing anybody's view. To understand the plan and the site plan. Start with the site plan. Right. Site plan. How does it, how does it okay. sit? And then how big right. is it? And how Someone big? wants a big copy? Because yeah. I don't mind using a small one. I know I can flip. This one is good. No, nope, it's not good. Nope, good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so since this is here. All right, so what this will involve, there's a little tiny bump out in the back. Do you have the site plan in there somewhere? Oh, the site plan, the, the survey. Yeah, that's, Sorry. That's, that little guy, yeah. Because that's a bigger, a smaller thing. Yes, so the existing house is on the left, the addition is on the right, and um, according to, uh, I guess it's ISD, as long as the addition, you can, you can keep parallel lines back of the house. Um, existing if you go closer than 10 feet. So uh, they are an inch less than that mark. Um, I actually would have gone a little bit more, the architect pushed for this, but uh, my neighbor, this, uh, my neighbor Kay is uh, at the house that would be 6'6", so just be passing the baby back and forth to uh, <laughs> <laughs> You might be rethinking. <laughs> no, I got a grandchild that lives way too far away. Yeah, okay. so, uh, Get your fix. Compensate. Yeah. Um, so the, the side part is so that I can have a hallway on the second floor, really. Um, so I don't have to cut into a bedroom because I do need the, the bedroom space. Um, I didn't want to make it into a tiny little room and it would kind of defeat the purpose. Um, and the kitchen will... Uh, They'll have, there'll be a sitting room off of the kitchen and a bathroom added on the first floor. So, <coughs> do you have questions about this? 
Um, yeah, I have reviewed this. I, I think it's a great plan. <coughs> I, I really, there's only one area of concern. I think everything else you really hit the mark on it as far as I'm concerned. I agree with you. The uh, uh, zoning code allows um, the side yard setback. If it's less than 10 feet, you can continue to use whatever it is that you have there now as long as you're going straight back. And there's an angle here, but I'm not worried about that. Um, and I was impressed by the fact that you're planning on adding additional uh, um, solar uh, Paneling, if I understand on the Definitely roof. the geothermal. The solar, I'm going to have to see if my budget allows for that. Okay. But, you know, I mean, you're, you're doing a, putting a lot of, of, of really great notes on this. The only thing that I had a concern about was with drainage, and that was the one area in your application that you really didn't comment on in the 12 different sections that we look at for environmental design review. There's one area for drainage. and. This is sort of tied into a provision of the general bylaw that says if you're adding more than 350 square feet of impervious surface, then you're supposed to file a plan with uh, the town engineer for mitigation. Um, I'll get you the text on that in just a the second. The architect went through this. I know mm -hmm. I, I went through his bill, but. <laughs> That's why you went. Careful, we do have an architect on the board, so I want to make sure. That's okay. I'm, I, I, yeah, I know I went through his bill that had, you know, listed out that yeah. was one of the items. So I believe it was done, but maybe it was done through the ZBA process? Well, maybe, because the ZBA would be able to give you relief uh, if there was an adverse finding by the town engineer. But um, I guess my, my threshold question is, do you know how much additional square footage of impervious surface is being added. So that would be, impervious surface would be the roof over the new addition. I'm not sure what materials you have for decking, but possibly decking as well. Well, decking will have slots. Okay. So, so that's probably okay, I would say yeah. that, when it, when it comes to impervious surface. But do you know what the calculation of the square footage of the new portion of the roof is? Well, the house is, I guess, each floor it's less than two. I guess it's probably less than 300 square feet, right, mm -hmm. per layer. So that would be the max. Right. So you'd probably have new a new roof area of about 300 square feet. Uh, yes. Okay. Because if you're under 350, then all the stuff that I'm talking about now is moved. Oh, great. Um, if you're at 350 or more, then you have to go through this. It would, no, because if you think about the calculations of the size of the house and what's being added, it couldn't be more than 350. Even if I'm off a little, um, I can't be off by that much. Yeah. So it would be, go ahead. Then. You know, I'm sorry. No. Well, you know, I mean, there's no way from the plans that I have, and I'm not a good enough um, guy with a slide rule to or the you know uh, architect scale to measure off off the scale you know scale off from the plan. Um, but I did note on one area where you're saying the lot coverage will increase by eight percent. And the total lot. Yeah. So I'm not sure what goes into lot coverage if that includes the deck or if it's just the addition. Oh I don't know. Yeah. Because the lot coverage if it's eight percent of What's your lot size again? Five thousand sixty-two. Yeah, I mean that gets you about four hundred square feet of additional lot coverage. So, so that's where I'm beginning to get a little concerned about you know how close you are. So I think if you could have your architect come back to us and say yes, I've can I calculated. Can some way I can come up with this? Um, the architect then just I'm having too many problems with him. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't have to be the same architect. It could be. <laughs> That's yeah. tricky then too. That's going to cost me even more. Yeah, um, this yeah. guy is. Uh, I, I understand. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's just I, I'm kind of guessing here that you're under the 350. It would just be nice to know that yeah. you're under the 350. So the sheet, so. Let me look at the, the sheet because I could figure this out. Oh, I don't have the ZBA one with me. Oh, I separated that off. So it's just total coverage, right, Bruce? You're saying so that 
Well, yeah, if you did it on, on live coverage, you know, the oh, yes. total amount of square footage is, is, of live coverage is increasing by 8%. So 8% times the 5,062 square feet, that would get you over 400 square feet of... of that has to include the deck. But and I would, it doesn't yeah. include taking down the previous deck either. Mm -hmm. right. So it wouldn't be that much of an increase. I mean, there's some, um, like uh, Plan A 1.3, you've got a lot of the dimensions of the new area there, and that looks like, you know, again, my, I, I would be guessing, but it looks like your addition there is about, it's a 23 by 13, something like that, is that roughly And there's a bump out yeah. of existing coverage that disappears with that. So you have to subtract that. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Well, you're probably okay. <coughs> just out of curiosity, then, presuming the issue is moot, but just out for my own curiosity, is there any plan to do anything additional with respect to uh, runoff or drainage on the property? Um, I am doing a French drain okay. along the side of the house. That helps. Um, Okay. Is that definitely part of the plan? It is. It okay. is. I get a tiny bit of water in by the front of the house, so I want to have that addressed and make sure that I don't have problems. Okay. And that runs along which side of the house? Is that over, over uh, here? Or this side, yeah. This side. Okay. Yeah, that's the only place where I ever get. It's just a tiny bit, but okay. I do get a little bit. Okay. Well, I don't really have any other questions, so. I'm taking this as a as a new coverage. Yeah, that's all. I'm doing. But I would trust the architect more than the Well, no, I the same deal. I'm just telling you a really rough estimate. It's close to 350. I think I got this right. But under? I don't know. So, I mean, I'm so close to it. Yeah. Yeah, you get a little bit, so that's probably taking out that. Mm -hmm. So you get it back. So you mean subtracting right, her you can say the bump that, out? That's that's that was there before. The just take it. So this, you just take that. Oh, so oh no, I'm just taking this. And just do this. Okay. And, this. But see, and then in terms of the service, you also have the bump out here. Yeah, so you can so almost see the bump out. Oh, the bump out's already there. Oh, you're right. So there, and then, so you can basically ignore this with because of the bump out, I think. And you're just doing this. Great. Yeah. I think you're around 320. Okay. Yeah, but you see what I'm saying? No, I totally get I it. think that's... No, no, yeah, that, that's even... I think that's a wash. That rectangle might be slightly... Yeah, I think so, that. but yeah, even yeah, if you yeah, call right. that a wash. Right, even if you call it a wash, then you'd be on the... Yeah, because yeah. they're only talking about new impervious service. Right. right. So, yeah. So, I think you're okay. <laughs> okay, good, because... Looking at an architect. Okay, just going to be here before, <laughs> um, before this is built. <laughs> this great. I don't have anything additional from the steam there. So. The, the setback there, I'm just for my education, the setbacks from the decks don't matter. Or is there a minimum there? I know that that's much less than the, the main structure of the house. I'm just curious. Are you talking about like that? The oh. corner of the, the corner of the deck. Yeah. Of the deck. Most of the northeasterly portion of the deck. Mm -hmm. Did you check? Did you check? Let's see here. These dimensions. Yeah, the northeasterly of the old deck looks like it's closer than the, than the six before. Yeah. You see, so mm -hmm. this one is closer, I'd say, than that one, but that one is closer than the eight six. It says here. Yeah. Oh, it's got this thing? Oh, so that's only three point eight. Oh. Wait, that's new or the old? That's new. That's new. The new is the new. Let's see. What I'm saying is, this is the old. Look like it. This is the old. Yeah. The old is even closer, but it's not measured either. No, this. This. Yeah, this got it. The old. No, it is. That's no. But what I'm saying is that they're going off of the eight six. So you're right. It's closer, but I'm just wondering what the reg is on that. I can go grab the bylaw if you want. 
Uh, it's, it's okay. I just, I'm sure you guys went through that. So. I'm just curious what that is. I the building department went through it, but I'm not as concerned about that because the contractors could think I changed. Right. I mean, that's, <laughs> so just maybe put that in a, a double check. is the same even of bridge line. Yeah, except they'll be for the bump out part they'll be um Yeah. But it's not higher than south facing. No, it's all the yeah. same height. Nothing yeah. changes so in terms of height. Right. It's just an extension of the same height. Yep. And I was careful about things like not having the windows point directly at my neighbors. Which <laughs> 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 was all that's all. <laughs> we like each other a lot, but you know, there's yeah. some huge yeah. space, yeah. and we all like that. <laughs> I don't really have anything else. I think it fits in nicely. Mm -hmm. I like the geothermal. I'm very excited about that. Yeah, if you're interested in it, Bill Wenzel is the guy you use at Columns, like, if you're ready to pull the trigger, because Massachusetts has um, a grant program just until September. And until 2016, you get a 30% tax credit. So, you know, by me being able to pull the trigger right away, I'll be able to get the Massachusetts grant plus the tax credit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have any further on period of it. It fits nicely. The rest of it. So when would um, it get filed? Uh, No, I, I just wanted to be sure to um, explain anything in the photographs or to, there's uh, a couple photographs that really show that area between the two houses and the, it, it's hard to convey from a, a street view that the yard goes down, it slopes down so a lot of the height of the addition mm -hmm. is um, below the street grade. Right. But to answer your question, um, once the decision is, the board has 14 days from a vote on special permit to file their written decision. And then there's a 20-day appeal period. And then after that appeal period elapses, you would take the written decision and file it with the Registry of Deeds. And once it's recorded at the Registry of Deeds, you have to bring proof of that um, reporting back to the planning department and the inspection services department and, and then apply for your building permit. Okay, I can do that in a day though. Yeah. Okay. So it's 14 days plus 20 days. Kathleen, um, do you still have anything pending before the ZBA? No, no, it all got transferred over, over to this yeah. process. And uh, um, I, I think though that in addition to what Andy was pointing out about the proposed deck, also the steps on the easterly side are closer to the lot line than the 8.6, which is the established setback that you have with the present structure. <coughs> and there are some carve-out exceptions for steps, but that is something that we call would need to verify for both the steps and the deck because we are getting we're establishing a new setback, right? A, 3.8 based off this well, right right there and then here as well. Well, 4.1 is existing. And those are new steps, aren't they? Are they? I think so, because if oh, you look at your existing conditions... The steps go... Uh, no, you're... you're, you're uh, it's close to where the steps go now. Okay. Yeah. So where do the steps go now? They go straight down there. Oh, so yeah, if you look okay. at proposed I versus... See. Yeah, I can say it's, it's like we're talking less than a foot difference from where it is now. Yeah, it would be, yeah. And it wasn't the line that was used, so I don't mm -hmm. just. But so it, it could be. I mean, sometimes we do allow 
um, encroachments for steps and things like bay windows and so on like that and, into the side yard uh, setback. But um, yeah, I just want to make sure that you know. You're, I mean, we're, we're we're sort of already contemplating that we may be asking you to shave off a corner of the deck to try to stay within that. But it would be helpful to know how much relief we can give the applicant or, or how much latitude that you have to work with so you're doing as little alteration to this plan as possible. You know? Such that you could take the bottom of the steps and draw that line as your, as your really porch existing. line, potentially. That's an existing yes. step. It's really, it looks very close to what's there now. Or it does. Plans. It, it, so that should be fine. I mean, it looks so similar. I don't see, I don't see any issue. Like this. That. If you got that, you could just apply the same line. Okay. I think. Yeah, it looks so close. It's, yeah. Um, That'll be an yeah. issue. I mean, the depth and steps are going to be further than it comes to that yard, right? Yes, like they're further than the And doesn't the yard broaden a little bit as you go back? Well, it, would be, it would be parallel no. to the property line. To your to side, side does. does. My yeah. side of yeah. it. Yeah. That is old. So, actually with the demo, it shows it pretty clearly. Looks very similar. So what we could, I mean, one possibility is to say that the distance of the existing stair, yeah. parallel to the property line, should not be increased in the new deck or stairs. I'll just make sure that that happens because it looks, it looks to me like it's. It's probably a little bit more than the four feet. might be a little bit more than the four feet that you show here. See? It, it might be a little more than that as well. Yeah. See that point? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So X can be X. Perpendicular to the right, you know, just a straight offset of the property line. I don't see any problem with that. Do you need new drawings to reflect this? No, I think we can make that a condition potentially of the. Good, thank you. You need to mark up the drawing, right? I don't even know if you need to. We could say it in words. I okay. Think. Yeah. So that. Uh, so you need to think about formulating a motion. Uh, I'm gonna uh, maybe Andy, you're the right person to to put together the motion. Um, I would suggest that we, where the applicant's um, petition is silent on drainage, just adding in that uh, the applicant will install a French drain along. The, I guess is that the westerly side of the of the yes. foundation. Um, and I don't think we need to be too particular about how big it needs to be. I would, I, I would be comfortable leaving that to you because you're the person who's going to be, you know, dealing with it if it, if it isn't sufficient to um, offset the uh, seepage issue on that side. Um, but then with respect to the setback, uh, Andy, you've got, I think, a better grip on that than I do, so I defer to you to make the motion. So, so I'll make the motion to approve the special permit application, which is EDR application for 59 Lowell Street with the following conditions. One is install the French drain along the westerly foundation.
and the other is that the new deck and stairs, the new newly constructed deck and stairs, should not be closer to the property line at a perpendicular angle than the existing stair or deck, whichever is closer. Than the existing stair? Or deck, whichever is closer to the property line. I think it's the stair, but I just, just in case. So it's mm -hmm. that diagram. So X is X. Mm -hmm. yeah. A second. Aye. 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 Thank you. And realistically, do, do you know how many days it would take before filing so I can get the contractor? This is well, January 7th. We've and got to submit it to the town clerk. We have to sign it to right. submit it to the town clerk. There's a 21 day appeal period. Yep, um, I'm aware of that. Okay. And just the 14 days, the length of influx from now, right? Yeah, so. Um, it's mostly out of it. Is there it something that easy, easy to? Well, you don't have to come back to us, right? No. This is yeah. all well, administrative. You won't have to come back. This this is just what we we take care this of. This is all administrative. And so you'd have to come down and sign it. Sign it. Literally. And, yeah. that, so that's what they scheduled. do. You don't have to do anything. You just wait to hear that it's been filed and that the appeal period has ended. So. Right, but to, I mean, the 14 days is um, a time of flux, right? So, I mean, it could all be signed from tomorrow and in, and then I could start potentially September 7th, or it could be two weeks later than that before I'm able to break ground. So that's, that. I want to keep the contractor for scheduling um, appraised of these timelines, and you know, right now he has it finishing on my due date. And that's starting on September 7th or 8th. So I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Everyone's going to be around. Anyone going on vacation? Yeah. Okay. I'm only around tomorrow morning, and then I'll be back on Friday. Back on Friday? Okay. Oh, that's, a, that's, that's doable. Or something. And how about you, Bruce? I leave tomorrow morning and back on the 26th, which is Wednesday. Okay. That's not too bad. I could, um, if you have a signature page, I could stop here in the morning. I could do the same. All right. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, that's the call. Yeah. Okay. It's only two conditions. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And and you know some of the general conditions that are on all three. Right. Terms. Yes. Yes. But only two special conditions for that relate to this particular application. So why don't we plan on doing that? Okay. Great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Yeah, we discussed nice about all these timelines and it's a nice project. make sure yeah. you, you do tell your contractor. He's probably familiar with it. But after the they sign, after the board signs. The decision is filed with the town clerk, and you still do have the appeal period, but at least yes. you'll know that that's fixed. That yes, yeah, I've been, period. I've prepped them about the appeal period, just not the other 14 days. Okay. So. Good. Well, thank you all very much. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's grab all of this over here. Are you guys what do we need the frozen yogurt? Yes, that's <laughs> great. We used to have Wine Wednesdays that you Yeah, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right yeah. yeah. Actually, this one might be easier. Oh, yeah. And so just take it in the back door. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Bye now. The Urban Land Institute um, will conduct these technical assistance panels for member members, and David Field and I are members, and um, we had a preliminary conference call with um, some of the architects who might serve on the technical assistance uh, panel. Uh, Michelle Landers um, is the director of Urban Land Institute in Boston. She participated. Uh, Niall McDonough uh, with the Berkshire Group and he's co-chair of Urban Land Institute's Boston Real Estate Advisory Committee. Dick Lampman from Bar and Bar Inc. 
was a co-chair of Urban Land Institute's Boston Real Estate Advisory Committee, and Barry Abramson, the president of Abramson and Associates, who's co-chair of ULI's Boston Real Estate Advisory Committee, uh, worked with us to try to scope the project and um, the, the proposed project. You see in your packet the outline of the proposed area, which includes the commercial building on Franklin and Broadway. It includes the commercial properties on Franklin Street. Then running west, it runs along Broadway and continues to what used to be Old Mystic Street. Well, not Old Mystic Street on near the country club, but where Mystic Street used to go down, um, where it's now sidewalk near Russell Common. It also includes the buildings further down Mystic Street, as you see. So the this would be a one day, very intensive one day effort. Uh, it would include stakeholder interviews and a, and a public meeting. And it concludes with a report. About six weeks later, they present a report with issues and opportunities. We, when we had originally discussed this with them, we were thinking about a September event because the fall gets very busy, but I, I think at this rate, it, it would have to be late September, or early October. So I have to check with Urban Land Institute to see if we can shift it a little bit further out. Based on the information in the packet, uh, do you have any questions or was the information clear? This is one of the priority areas in the master plan. So, I have a couple questions. The, um, this effort really doesn't start with a presupposition as to what the eventual build out would be, right? This is more... No. Okay. It doesn't um, assume a particular density or height. Mm -hmm. No. The, um, the material on the flyers that talks about summary of the issues on the second page, um, you know, talks about the development potential of mixed-use development in Russell Commons. And um, uh, it, that would only seem to make sense if they were doing, um, you know, below grade parking there. So is that part of what they're talking about, or is it something? I'm sorry to make you repeat yourself. Through oh, okay. So making some notes. Yeah, on the um, second page of this handout about the project, it says top paragraph it says the um, one of the things that would be considered would be uh, development. Uh, mixed use development in Russell Commons, which to my mind only makes sense if you're putting parking underground. So is that, that should premature have been more to, to I think what was what we asked them to consider was whether there was any opportunity to do mixed use on the outside perimeter. Okay. Um, gotcha. Some people have said from you know time to time they've said that that would be a, a good location for that and that would be possible and there's enough room there. But we'd be asking them, is there really enough room mm -hmm. there to contemplate some perimeter development around the parking and put a deck on top of it? Okay. And then my other question was just about the area that we're talking about and you uh, described the various buildings and so on. I think it's, we're only looking on the north side of Mass Ave, right? Mm -hmm. South of... No, it's, it's both sides here, Bruce. Okay. It's the upper one. Yeah, I was looking at this carefully. The, the little red rectangle here yeah. is actually the full perimeter of this image here. Okay. So it picks up Massachusetts Avenue as this kind of an arc. Mm hmm. Well, that's. But it's. It, that's a big area to do in a day. It is. It picks up 
I think they're trying to get across the street on Broadway Plaza. So this, um, that square, that's actually not um, not clear. I, I, I should clarify. That square shows roughly where the locus is, but this top map with the white outline shows the limit of the oh. study area. Sorry, Andy, I should have been, made oh. that distinction. The only property... Study area, I see. Yeah. So... Okay. Is that one on Franklin Street? So Just the one on Franklin that. Street, no, that's a good point. which is, is between Mass Ave. That's the building that um, includes Jackie's um, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. design group, um, yeah. the, the Polinas, and what used to be the Wild Child Isis. Or, yeah, Isis. Yeah. Yes. Because it's a and it doesn't include the, building. the fire station Correct. triangle, which is strange. Well, the, the reason, there's a good reason for that um, from a public investment perspective. We've just spent a lot of money upgrading that. Mm -hmm. uh, there was, as you see in the description of the, the two-page description, at one point it was recommended that the town consider relocating that fire station and using that for commercial development. But the, the planning process, the capital planning process for updating that station in place was already underway. And in fact, the investment has just been made, and it's here. It's beautiful. <laughs> so, fire station. Yes. So that that's. But it's it's. From a design perspective, it, it may not make sense, but from a public investment perspective, there's kind of no turning back. On that now. But but isn't it part of the study area? I mean, it's an open space. It's. No, it is. I'm not saying you have to build on it, but you have to look at it if you're going to design anything on the side of the street. That's. No, that's facing it. We have to know that it's there. Maybe that's implicit in this that mm -hmm. that whatever you do, with, which is in the white outline study area, has to acknowledge that there's a functioning fire station there and a memorial park. <laughs> right, and yeah. a road and uh, Mass Ave, and it's it's kind of hard to do it without kind of grabbing across Mystic, you know, this this much. I mean, just in your, not in your actual development area, but in your study area of what you're, what you're considering as relevant surrounding context. Mm -hmm. But maybe that, that's somehow assumed. I'm just trying to find, find where it might. It, that's why I thought that whole study area was kind of giving the area that they would be aware of in the context of what they're looking at is the smaller part of that. The white outline is where the, is the limit of suggested potential redevelopment. It's also called the study area. Yeah. And that also includes the, was it the, the state owned buildings on Mystic Street, yeah, the department of yeah, the right. They're, they're yeah. tenants that's not owned by the state. Oh, okay, it's owned by the town. No. It's owned by a private property owner. Oh, really? Okay. I think it's kind of implied that you can't. I mean, urban land is just not going to do a study and ignore what's around it, I wouldn't think. When we had the conference call, we discussed the area um, and the context. We could expand the area in order to be clear that they have to take that into consideration. But they also recognize that they have a very limited, they have this one day that, that they come in and do the work. So for that reason, they, were, they didn't want to overpromise what, what they could start yeah. next. What they could study for, for. Is your concern that they would potentially design in a, in a vacuum? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they will, but I'm just agreeing to me. just have to say that the, Important the, context. The, con the context would be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would be considered. I mean, it, it's just... Carol, how does this fit in with the master plan? Um, I would like to tell you which um, implementation step it is, but I, I don't have that, and it's not really that important. But the Arlington Center has been... Um, an important planning focus for a long time. When the Larry Koff study was done, it was during the economic downturn, and there really wasn't an opportunity to follow up on that. Recognizing that 
this is kind of the heart of Arlington Center when we had this opportunity to possibly have ULI come in, we thought it would good, be a good way to kind of jump start mm -hmm. the, the planning the, and, and urban design in this area. Uh, the, I do have a copy, bear with me. Okay. I think my only concern is, is what, similar to what Mike voiced last week, that this fits in in line with the entire process that was just wrapped up. <clears throat> as is part of that implementation process and not something separate. I think that should be made clear. What I can do is provide the board with the master plan context, the master plan references. Um, the board or the line? This board, so that you, I think both, you know, naturally Urban Land Institute as well, but I think it's important for, for the board to have an answer to how it fits in with the master plan. So I'd like to you know, locate the sections of the plan and the implementation um, steps that refer to Arlington Center. Um, I think we should also probably see if um, ULI can work this into their schedule later in the fall. Because I can bring this to the board on, um, at the September 21st meeting. You know, I'm, uh, I think it's always great to get advice and input from anybody who wants to give it to us. I wonder how much we're really going to get out of this for one day, though. I mean, it just seems very ambitious in terms of, you know, doing a site tour, conducting interviews, working panel, working lunch. I mean, I just have a feeling in some ways we're going to be scratching the surface and not really getting a lot of valuable information. That, that is a distinct possibility. It's, um, it's a lot of work to pull something like this together. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm you know, if they can do it, I, I, you know, I'd be glad to, you know, sort of, yeah, keep my words on it, but it just seems like it's... I yeah, know. I guess I'm that's a lot to do in a day. Well, and if you were going to do it, I guess I'm surprised it goes beyond just Russell Cummings. Or, or something, you know. I mean, yeah. it's just kind of like brainstorming. If it was on. really it's site specific, it, 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 it was just like that one site, you know, yeah. a brainstorming session on that one. We site. did talk to them about. Um, we initially said Russell Common parking yeah. lot, and uh, they don't do single parcel okay. developments. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they try to avoid that. They try to do more area. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this this does seem extremely ambitious. There's a lot of ground to cover. In a week. Well, I want the board to be comfortable with it, and and there's nothing, there's no reason we have to do this. This is. Well, but is it is it something that goes away at some point? The opportunity. Yeah. That's what I'd like to find out. It, in fact, if we could, you know, more than postpone it till later in the fall. There is some preliminary work that we can do with the community um, and really identifying stakeholders. And so what Urban Land Institute, I think, would, would do end up recommending different types of urban design mm -hmm. opportunities. Uh, I don't think they would actually do sketches, but they would suggest different um, densities and would be able to, I believe they would be able to let us know if Russell Common could support a deck and redevelopment, yeah. or just a deck. It just seems to me that it, it might be something that also, you know, might be good to have the Master Plan Implementation Committee, you know, involved with. Maybe yeah. even more so than us, just to make sure that the context of it is done within 
the framework within the framework master plan, plan, plan as an implementation step. Yeah, uh, I guess that that would be my other I concern. Value that for sure. Sure. In, in the meantime, I, I'll speak with you with Urban Land Institute and tell them that we are interested in seeing if we can put this off a little bit. The Master Plan Implementation Committee should be formed this fall and right. get underway. So uh, we also could probably do some um, real good um, groundwork on this ourselves as far as uh, getting stakeholders, stakeholders identified and um, some objectives identified from the stakeholders and, and do it next year. And it could be a bit of a bonding experience with the Master Plan Implementation Committee to, to have it. So it takes uh, a real project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Just a thought. It's a good thought. Okay. So we'll have some more information on that in our next meeting. Next on the agenda is uh, designation of an ARB member to serve on the Community Preservation Act Committee. I am going to table that. Something's come up. To table that to the next meeting on the 21st of September and move to approval of minutes. Um, I had a couple of comments. So on the first page, uh, the second to last paragraph, um, I think it needs an introductory clause because we're shifting subjects in the agenda that night. So I would lead off with respect to with respect to the housing plan advisory committee, comma, Mr. Fitzsimmons asked if Ms. Walker spoke to each candidate, and then in the line below that, where it says, Mr. Kerr asked if their recommendations would create the committee. Our recommendation. Uh, it was our approval of their recommendations. Yeah. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. And, but I think what you were getting at was, would it was sort of a slight of candidates, right? That right. Be, you know, so it, it, I'm not quite sure how to rephrase that, but it, it, when it, it read to me, it seemed a little awkward. I was confused, and I'd been at the meeting. So um, <laughs> maybe mm -hmm. um, Mr. Kerr asked if the recommended slate, if approved by the ARB, would be would the committee. form the committee. Would form the, the committee. committee. Would form the committee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that. And then over on the second page, the first full paragraph, um, the very last phrase that currently reads, and essentially create a master plan, I would say, and essentially create a site-specific mini master plan, just so it doesn't sound like we're embarking on a but we just finished. Yeah. In the first full sentence, it says stated that ACMI was recoding the meeting. I think they were recording. <laughs> I'll move to approve as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So they, they took our letter. They're and voting tonight on the final language oh, okay. of the letter. 
and that will go in tomorrow morning. They'll go in tomorrow morning. Uh, I believe it's going in tomorrow morning. They, excuse me, close of business tomorrow. They won't have that. And we got our letter last yes. week. Yes. Okay. Let's see then. And it was received. Okay. Thank you very much for your work on that. Con conflict. Yes, they did. They had a very good letter. We saw that letter. Okay. Anything else? No, we will see you on September 21st for an EDR and uh, the follow-up on Urban Land Institute. That's the hotel? Yes, yes, it is. And if you have any other agenda items that uh, we should be thinking of for the 21st, please don't hesitate to email me. Don't copy each other. Okay. All right. I'll move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Good. Banger Gavel. Well done.